In this video, we're gonna be going over 3D breast planning with a concurrent boost or a simultaneous integrated boost. Now this is something that's very easy to do with IMRT and VMAP, but can be a little challenging sometimes or intimidating to do with 3D techniques. So I'm gonna show you a really easy way to do it in Eclipse. So the first thing I like to do is get my tangent fields, my regular tangents set up exactly how I would if I was doing a regular you know, tangent breast. Um, next, I'm going to look at my boost volume and I'm going to think about how I would treat this boost volume sequentially. However, you would normally treat a sequential breast boost in your clinic, um, you know, whether that be just with tangents or three field or if you're doing more complex, you know, couch kicks, conformal arcs, whatever you normally do, that same technique will probably work. Um, with a concurrent boost. So to keep this video a little bit simpler and quicker, we're going to do a very uh, easy, simple three field boost technique. All right. But again, whatever you normally do, you can use what I'm about to show you with that same technique. All right. Um, so if I was going to boost this with a simple three field technique, I'd probably use, you know, tangent fields, probably same angles as my initial with a third, you know, AP or slightly oblique angle. Okay. We don't need to add additional tangent fields. We can use our initial tangents as part of the boost plan. And then I've added this third, you know, oblique right here that we're gonna use you know, to boost this volume, okay? But we're gonna ignore that for now. Next thing I'm gonna do is open up my field weight and I'm going to change the total weight. A lot of times it'll be more than one when you first set up a plan, right? So I'm gonna change that total to one because we're gonna manually manipulate these field weights. So it's just easier if you change it to one, you could think in terms of 100%. And then I'm going to zero out all of my boost only fields. So if you have multiple fields, you know, you'd zero all those boost only fields. In this case, it's this field three for us. Next, I'm going to calculate my plan. So what I'm going to do first is set up my tangent fields just like I would normally for a tangent only breast plan. Okay, you can, you, you can adjust your weight. So if we look at our weight, maybe throw an extra percent on laterally. So you want to adjust your weight, you want to normalize, you want to get your initial tangents ready to go as if you are treating a normal tangent breast. Now real quick, for me specifically, let's turn these volumes off. Right now I have 105% of 4,005 turned on. What we can do is quickly make sure we have at least 95.95 on that volume. So our prescription is 267 times 15 right now, 4,005. I think it's easier to plan the, with the method I'm gonna show you if you have your prescription set to that uh, 4,005. If you in your clinic like to have that be 320 times 15 for 4,800, if you like your prescription to be 4,800, you, you can change that after the fact. And I can show you how to do that at the, at the end of this. For now though, we'll leave it at 4,005. So in order to get 95-95 coverage on our PTV 4005, we normalize all the way up to 105%, okay? But I like to start with as good a coverage as I possibly can get. So we're gonna normalize back down. What I like to do is turn my 105 volume on and normalize to the point where I th think I could not get rid of 105 anymore. So I know I have the coverage I need already, I want to go as good as I can, but up to the point where I can just get rid of all that 105. So what I mean by that is, if I go all the way down to 90%, the whole field is now 105, so I'd have to block out my entire field with a field and field to cool this down. And you know that defeats the whole purpose, right? You might as well just normalize. So if we normalize just down a couple percent, maybe 98, you can see I could still add a field and field, block out all of this 105. And we don't have to block out all the 105, right? But, you know, a really good plan would be, you know, really good coverage and a max dose less than 105%, right? So I'm just going for like ideal 
really nice looking plan. I could still add a field and field, get rid of this 105 volume, still leaving a, enough open for, for that to make sense. All right. Um, so we'll start right here, 98%. Okay. So our tangent field's ready to go. I could start planning a regular tangent breast right now if I wanted to. Next, I'm going to start looking at my boost volume. So how would I treat this boost volume? What beam angles would I use if I were going to do a sequential boost? Again, to keep this video simple, we're going to just do standard three field technique. So I added this third field. So I'm going to start adding weight or adding MU basically to this third field only and leave these tangents alone. So to do that, I'm going to lock my two tangents and then my total weight, I'm going to start bumping that up. So let's bump it up 5%. And you can see it adds, adds MU to that field, heats up just our boost area right here. I have my 105 or 95 of 4800, which is 4560 turned on. So ideally we want that boost volume to be completely covered by that 95 line, right? So I can keep adding weight slowly to my total, which will increase the weight of that O3. If you watch your monitor units, basically these tangent MUs won't change. We're only increasing the MU to O3 right now to this boost boost uh, field. Um, if you reach a point, depending on your beam arrangement and you know what's happening, if you reach a point where you don't want to add any more weight to those boost fields, you can still use your tangent fields to boost this volume too. So we can unlock those and we can add some weight to all three fields. And we'll be able to use our field and fields on our tangents to cool off all the regular breasts, right? Only leave it hot around the boost where we need that extra, extra dose. So let's go up a little bit more. So if we look at that 95 line, it's covering our boost volume pretty well. So let's say this is a good starting point for us. So I have added a few clinical goals here. It's always good to check those before you do actually start um, getting deep into your plan. So 95.95 on our PTV 4005, and I'm actually looking at 4005 minus 4800 just to make sure I have you know, really good coverage on what we actually want to be covered by 3805. Our boost PTV, same thing, much more coverage than we need. That's great. Our, our PTV eval for our regular breast, we want less than 30% to receive that boost prescription dose, which is good. This is the one, if this one is failing, you're gonna want to adjust your, your boost beam arrangement. You're going to need to add a new field, change your angles, change your margin you're using around that boost volume. You're going to want to change that before. Usually you can't get this one to go from failing to passing by adding field and fields. All right. This one, though, this 43.20, less than 50%, this one is usually going to be failing, but this is the one you can meet um, you know, by cooling parts of your plan down. So this one's okay to be failing right now. Okay, so usually regardless of, you know, al almost always you're gonna have your tangent fields, right? And no matter what m boost arrangement I'm using, I'm gonna add most of my field and fields. Or if you're doing an e-comp plan, irregular surface compensation, you know, I'm gonna adjust that fluence mostly from my initial tangent fields. At the end, there might be some opportunities to adjust and manipulate your boost fields, but usually most is gonna come from your tangents. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. I like to, so again, if, if we're looking at our tangent field right here, I have 105 of my initial prescription turned on, so 4205, and then I have 105 for the boost turned on. Ideally, all the breast surrounding my boost gets less than that 105, 4205, right? So I'm gonna block out 
everywhere that's getting 4205 except where it's going to cover our boost. Obviously the boost needs to get more dose than that, right? But you can still cool off your boost area where your boost is hot. So if we look, you know, just like a regular breast, it's always going to be hot superficially. So we can block that out and cool that off, but deep, you know, we don't want to block block that out. So my field and field will look something like this. Block out that 4205. I'm gonna leave my boost area open, except where the 5040 line is. So 105% of my boost prescription. And then you can usually completely surround that boost volume pretty much. So we're using our field and fields now to cool off that breast, but you know we're boosting, giving more MU right to our our area where we're doing our concurrent boost. I like to go one side to the next. And just go back and forth. Same thing over here. All right, and I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go back and forth on my tangents um, until we've cooled this plan down. I'm gonna fast forward through this a little bit. All right, when you're all done with your field and fields, hopefully your plan looks something like this. So I've already went ahead and I merged my field and fields. I only added them to my tangents, as you just saw. Um, and I adjusted my isotope lines, so the thicker lines are now 95% of both prescriptions. As we scroll through, so everywhere below our boost volume, you can see is covered by 95% really well, even 100%, very minimal 105. Up near the boost volume, depending on your boost beam arrangement. So again, we used a simple three field technique. So of course we get quite a bit, we're using those tangents to boost our, our uh, boost volume. So quite a bit of 105 in this area but that's okay, that's just what we needed to do. Um, so this plan looks really good. Our max dose is only 5,005. If we look at those those four clinical goals, you know, our coverage is very nice. Be 4,800, much below 30%, 4,320, way below 50%. So everything looks good. The last step, if you do want your boost uh, or your prescription to be that boost volume, right, 4,008, I'm going to show you, or 4800, I'm going to show you a quick, easy way to do that. I'm going to turn on my boost volume, and I'm just going to look at what percent I'm covered by 4800. So in this case, 4800, 4800 is covering about, let's say, 52.8% of our volume. So I'm just going to change my prescription. 4800, I'm gonna make sure I change my target to that boost target. Then I'm just gonna simply normalize 100% covering 52.8%, which is what we just found. Adjust my isos lines. Back to what they were. And there you go, we have the exact same plan now except our prescription is changed.
the other way to do it is uh, you know you can write your MU down and then just adjust change your prescription adjust your normalization until the the MU are the same that is it so my my contact information is at the bottom of the screen please reach out if you have any questions or comments otherwise thanks for watching